Former NATO Supreme Allied Commander Europe General Philip M. Breedlove said Ukraine's successful invasion of Russia's Kursk region shows it can carry out complex military operations without relying on Western advice. Ukrainian troops crossed the border into Russia on August the 6th in a high-risk move that deviated from previous strategies to counter Russian incursions, Business Insider reported. General Breedlove said he considered Ukraine's operation a success. He said the move would have repercussions beyond the territory itself, creating big problems for Russian ruler Vladimir Putin about how ordinary Russians view their leaders and military. He said it showed how Ukraine could achieve such big victories without much Western involvement. The general said that the invasion was carried out without any special instructions from the West and look how well it worked. The attack on the Kursk region was carried out, it would seem, without prior information to Western partners. Breedlove, who is also a retired U.S. Air Force general, compared Ukraine's success at Kursk to its major counteroffensive last year when Ukraine failed to retake vast territories. He said that during that counteroffensive, the West and other partners imposed many restrictions on Ukraine. The general believes that Ukraine would have been more successful if it had been as bold as it was in the Kursk region. I believe that if Ukraine had been able to use such an initiative last year, we would have had different results, he said. While Western countries have given Ukraine billions of dollars in weapons, they have also placed restrictions on their use, which has proven a disappointment to Ukrainians. Initially, Ukraine was not allowed to use any Western weapons against any targets inside Russia, allowing Russia to freely deploy its weapons near the border. In May, that restriction was relaxed. But many allies, including the United States, still prohibit Ukraine from using long-range weapons in Russia, limiting Ukraine's ability to hit high-value targets there. Breedlove said he believed Western politicians had limited Ukraine because Putin had convinced them that if Ukraine won, it would have huge consequences. The most successful weapon Putin has in this war is intimidation or, in military terms, his ability to constrain Western actions by his threats. I believe this war will end exactly the way Western policymakers want it to. Right now, Western policymakers are morally or intellectually incapable of understanding what a Ukrainian victory would mean. Putin is defeated. The Russian military is broken, Breedlove said. He added that the West's restrictions on Ukraine must change. If Ukraine can hit the Russian supplies and personnel before they get to Ukraine, I think Ukraine can win this war. Breedlove said he believes it is too early to say for sure whether the Kursk is a major strategic success, although he believes it is. The general added that during this invasion, Ukraine dictated the terms of this fight, a sharp contrast to much of the war. The West's strategy, and the US in particular, to end the war in Ukraine after two and a half years remains the same. Find a middle ground between supporting Ukraine and punishing Russia on the one hand and reducing the risk of escalation on the other. At the same time, writes foreign policy, however, as rational as this approach may seem, it is based on a mistaken assumption that Putin's mind can be changed. The evidence suggests that Putin is simply unconvinced on Ukraine. For him, preventing Ukraine from becoming a bastion that the West can use to threaten Russia is a strategic imperative. He has taken personal responsibility for achieving that outcome and likely believes it is worth almost any price. Trying to force him to give in is a futile exercise that simply wastes lives and resources. The newspaper writes, It is noted that there is only one viable option for ending the war in Ukraine on terms acceptable to the West and Kyiv. Wait out Putin. When Putin ordered the invasion, it was a war of his choosing. There was no urgent threat to Russia's security that would require a large-scale invasion of its neighbor. And because it is a war of choice, Putin has the power to stop it. The war is not existential for Russia. Withdrawing Russian troops from Ukraine would not threaten the existence of the Russian state and would likely not even threaten Putin's own rule. He could easily declare victory in Ukraine and launch an accompanying information campaign to justify his reversal. FP believes. According to the newspaper, Putin's attack on Ukraine is best viewed as an unfair preventive war launched to stop what Putin saw as a future threat to Russia's security. At the same time, it was a surprisingly risky move for Putin, given that he had previously tried to minimize the use of Russian resources. The evidence suggests that on Ukraine, Putin simply cannot be swayed. He is fully committed. FP writes.
The publication emphasizes that the fact that the war is so out of step with Putin's usual risk calculation suggests that he has made a strategic decision regarding Ukraine that he is unwilling to back down from. Thus, Western pressure is unlikely to force him to change his mind and end the war on terms acceptable to Kyiv and Washington. If Putin is unwilling to stop his offensive in Ukraine, the war can only end in one of two ways. Either because Russia has lost the ability to continue its campaign or because Putin is no longer in power. And as FP notes, achieving the first result by degrading Russia's capabilities is unrealistic since Putin can continue to throw soldiers and resources into the fight and the Russian military is unlikely to collapse. This leaves a second way to end the war, Putin's departure from the Kremlin. It is entirely possible that he will leave voluntarily or be forced out. What is certain is that at some point he will die. Only when he is no longer in power can the real work of permanently resolving the war in Ukraine begin. The publication concludes, Until then, Washington should focus on helping Ukraine hold the front lines and prevent further Russian military gains and conserve its resources. It's an unsatisfactory and politically unpalatable approach, but it's the only realistic option. Foreign policy says 